Why would anybody write a blog? Hey, what is up guys? It is Harrison Barron, The Morning Entrepreneur. And like I just said, why would anybody write a blog? They seem so silly. They seem so old school. There's podcasts and the flashy YouTube. But why do people still write blogs? Well, I'm going to show you guys today why people write blogs. And I'm going to try to convince you on why you should start a blog for your website. So... Why do you trust me? Why should you trust me? I own a six-figure agency called Growth Generators, and this is literally what we do for clients. We help them create more content. That is it. That is what we do. We help them drive more content. Also, shout out to my dog, Hunter, who's hanging out with me. And ultimately, people ask questions, right? You have your SERPs, your search engine results page, and that's because you put a query in, a question into Google, or some statement, or maybe a, maybe a jumbled set of words, right? And Google is a zero sum game. They are always going to be producing something to give you as an answer. But I think what a lot of people don't understand is you could take advantage of what Google's showing you, right? Or you can take advantage of how you get your website out there more. Most people think of a website as it just sits there and it's stagnant. You want a website because it is going to work for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That is the beauty of it. I have content that I wrote over a year ago getting traffic. And just like you've seen on many of these videos, I have a video that is still getting traffic every single day on my YouTube channel, which is awesome. I love that. So I want to share with you guys just a little bit of research and kind of things that you could come up for in your industry and how to leverage this. So let me share my screen here. And you're going to see, I already did a little searching. And the reason why I did some searching is because I searched this a long time ago. When I say a long time ago, we're probably going back a couple of years now. And this wasn't actually the first uh, post, but should I get a waterbed? I had a bunch of questions about waterbeds. I was with a buddy of mine and, and he was shopping for, for beds here. And I, we, we, we were in Texas. It's a long story. But he was like, you know, I was sitting there. I was like, everybody had a waterbed back in the day, right? What happened to... Right, so you're gonna have what happened to waterbeds, and there's there's several articles on here. Now these articles weren't necessarily here when I was doing the research because I remember vividly the first article that came up, and the first article that actually came up was this purple mattresses article. Now you might be thinking, well, purple mattresses. I'm sure you guys probably are pretty familiar with them, but yeah, let me pull them up from here. Purple mattresses sells these like super state of the art. I mean, you could, they're supposed to be made for the space station essentially, but you can get a mattress. Wow. They're actually pretty cheap now. And they have this like cool gel foam thing. I'm sure you've probably seen the guy with the eggs on his back and he gets dropped on the purple mattress and they are unbelievably comfortable. But the interesting part is right. Purple mattress made an article about waterbeds. So how does that correlate? Why does that even matter? Well, I think a lot of people, they have this idea that like, well, it's not directly related to my industry, but what, do people still sleep on waterbeds is one of the various questions that people ask, right? What happened to waterbeds? Do people still sleep on waterbeds, right? And this article is a beautiful little article. It's just, it's nothing too crazy. It's pretty easy to consume. Specifically, it's probably a couple hundred words. I'd probably say like a thousand, oh, 1600 words, right? So it's 1600 words and it tells you all about why you might want a waterbed, why you probably didn't want a waterbed, right? It talks about them all about the maintenance here and how you had to go about getting one and you know how much are water beds i mean it's pretty cool to see that somebody like this is creating content about water beds but now you might be thinking well you know why isn't a water bed company creating it well what happened was purple mattresses realized that there is a massive void in the amount of people creating content about water beds right it's an older industry it, it literally says it right here it was popular in the 90s right and the reason why is because nobody's really using waterbeds anymore, but there's still people such as myself that one day when we were, you know, we were bed shopping for them and I was like, just curious. I'm like, Hey, whatever happened to waterbeds, right? Like what, like, why did people stop buying waterbeds? And I went on Google on my cell phone and literally the first thing that came up was a purple, there was this article, this purple mattress article. Now it was a quick read and I was like, wow, it's so interesting to see all of the information about waterbeds, why they're popular, why they were no longer popular, the hassle, the maintenance that came with it, changing the water, the whole process, right? And the interesting part is, as we both know now, that purple mattresses doesn't make waterbeds. And the reason why is because they've leveraged the, the keyword difficulty and started creating content around this area. And this is where people start to get confused or, or 
it doesn't really make sense, right? So obviously you have my website, HarrisonBaron.com, which is also getting a makeover soon. Um, but you have HarrisonBaron.com, right? And I rank for what are the pros and cons of Alignable, right? So Alignable is a pretty popular um, platform. It's a, it's a business professional platform. And on here, you can go on and you can connect with people. It's it's kind of like a dumbed down version of LinkedIn. I'm not particularly in love with it. And sorry, my SEO uh, stuff is coming up here. But it's a great platform for some people. For other people, I don't particularly love it, but I've seen some people have a lot of success with it. Now, the interesting part is, is I have a whole article about what are the pros and cons of Alignable, right? And the worst spam bot so, uh, social platform of all mankind, should you be on LinkedIn, Alignable, or both for your business, right? The truth about Alignable, IYBS, local, right? And if you click on it, the crazy part is, is this content was written in June 8th of 2020, which is weirdly enough one year to the date that i'm recording this video i would have never guessed that and i did not plan this at all but that's pretty crazy if you really think about it this article which is literally one year old is still ranking and still getting traffic online so if you're interested in alignable or linkedin i actually sell a linkedin course which is why i created the content around this right i'm not giving myself a shameless plug here but there's a there was a thought process behind why i created it right you have uh, this is the, i mean this is the more back end of it but you you can see that that I literally LinkedIn prospecting and profile masterclass, right? That is my course if you want to go check it out. But the reason why I created this article was specifically because I had a course about LinkedIn. So I wanted to create it to attract my ideal buyer. And I think that this is where a lot of people get confused about like, why should I create a blog? Why should I, why does any of this matter? Why are you, you know, why do we create topics that are not directly related to what we have, right? But Purple Mattresses doesn't sell waterbeds. But what they're doing is they're educating somebody and somebody who's interested in getting a mattress is probably going to go out and get a bed, right? Like they're probably searching about water beds because they're interested in possibly getting one as an option. So this, it doesn't necessarily steer people away from water beds. It literally just lays out the facts, right? Let's it all hang out and you make your own decision. And that's the part where I see a lot of people keep struggling over and over and over again. They're like, well, why would I make that content? Like, what, what's the point of that? And the point of that is to provide good value to a reader and educate them. And if the reader knows, likes, and trusts you because they've found your stuff, they will buy from you, all right? And even if they don't buy from you, let's just say Purple gets, I don't know, 10,000 visits per month, which might be on the high side, but I don't know, right? They get 10,000 visits per month out of this, right? If they can convert 1% of those people, heck, if they can convert a half a percentage of those people, that's still like free mattress sales, right? I mean, they paid somebody a couple hundred dollars to write this article, right? Out of that, out of that let's just say 10, 10,000, right? If they get 10%, that's what? If they, a thousand people, right? They get a thousand email addresses. I, even if they get 1%, right? You're talking about what? A hundred people. I mean, that's a no brainer. A hundred mattresses per month sold because of an article written about waterbeds. Now, I mean, that's probably on the lowest end. Maybe it's, maybe it's a half a percent. Maybe it's 50, maybe it's five, but even still purple mattresses, as we just saw, they're not the most expensive, but they're not the cheapest, right? You, I mean, you're talking about for the most part, $600 for a starter bed, right? And then you probably need the bed frame. So I, I mean, you're talking about $600, some simple math here. Sorry, calculator. And you do, I don't know, 600 bucks. Maybe they sell, f I don't know, 50 of them, right? That's a half a percent. This article brings in $30,000 in revenue, right? Even on the, even on the low end of, of 600, right? Times maybe they sell five, right? You're still talking about $3,000 a year, which, which is the value of this article, right? And then you still got to, or better yet, per month. And that's still bringing in $36,000 on their cheapest mattress on one article, right? That, that is literally half a percent. Even if you go down to a, a, a tenth of 1%, right? Let's just say it's one air mat one, or two beds. I think it'd probably sell more than one, right? So if, if it's two beds, you just take uh, let me make sure this is zero here. Uh, you have 600, right? Times two. Nope. Times two equals 1200 times that by 12. That's, that's still $14,400 per year. If they sell two beds extra per month off of one 
article. That is absolutely insane. So this is why you'd want to create content around your industry. It doesn't have to be specifically tied to your industry, but as long as it's relatable, right? Somebody that's searching for water beds is probably interested. Somebody searching for Alignable or LinkedIn is I mean, like I have a course, it drives traffic to that article. And then that article then is given the opportunity to convert sales. And this is the magical part about creating content, about blogging, allowing your website to work for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I haven't touched that article in over a year and it is still driving traffic. That is the craziest part about all of this. So that's why you should blog. That's why you should create content on a regular basis. It will work for you for months and years down the road and ultimately attract your ideal buyer. That's the best part about it. So I hope you guys found value in this. If you guys are blogging, if you guys have questions, leave them down below. I'd be really happy to answer them. I'm like almost done with my 120 videos. I think I have like 12 or 11 left. I would really appreciate comments and questions. Like I'm out of ideas. I had like a hundred written down and I've burned through a hundred. So thanks. <laughs> Bye.